welcome to the course on nanostructured materials, synthesis, properties, self assembly and applications. We are in the module 4 of this course and uh, we are we are working on photocatalysis right now and we had two lectures on photocatalysis and today is the third lecture on photocatalysis and uh, this is also the lecture 3 of module 4. So, in photocatalysis in the previous lectures, we looked at the basic ideas of uh, catalysis in the presence of light and how uh, UV light and visible light uh, catalyst, uh, catalyze reactions through the generation on, of electrons and holes. And two important criteria are the electron and hole should be generated efficiently and the second thing is the electron and hole should be separated from each other, so that they do not recombine and uh, uh, release of photon. So, this recombination has to be prevented and this charge separation is an important part in the design of new materials, which will allow for enhanced uh, efficiency of the photocatalyst. Now, uh, the uh, photocatalysis as we see uh, you can have high uh, surface area, small crystalline size, uh, the especially we are discussing for titanium dioxide and in this case the anatase form of titanium dioxide is very important. There are three forms of titanium dioxide, uh, the uh, rutile form is the high temperature form, whereas uh, the anatase form is the low temperature form and we require the anatase form for high photocatalytic activity. So, the anatase form is very important, then TiO 2 photocatalyst can be prepared with high crystallinity, it can be prepared with high porosity. So, porous structures of titania can be prevented and the activation uh, through a light source is possible uh, in TiO 2. Let us look at the conditions affecting the photocatalytic activity of TiO 2. Now, uh, TiO 2 is normally prepared through an alkoxide. Through solution methods, we start from a titanium alkoxide and uh, typically we take titanium isopropoxide and when you hydrolyze it with water you get this kind of hydrates at low temperature and then when you heat it further you calcine it, you get the anatase form of TiO 2. If you heat it further that is you further calcine you get the rutile form of TiO 2. Now, if you look at the properties uh, if you have at low temperature you normally have the amorphous form and at low temperatures you have low uh, a uh, very low surface area. Uh, in this case you have a large, when you have large crystallinity uh, especially like in rutile. So, if you have the surface area which is low uh, and you may have very large uh, surface area both are possible, the activity, the activity goes down if the surface area goes down. So, the activity will be large uh, when the surface area is very high and the activity will become small when the surface area is small. In crystallinity, if you have very high uh, crystallinity, then the which you get at high temperatures uh, and in the rutile form, you will get this high crystallinity. In the anatase form somewhere in the middle you have a uh, reasonable crystallinity and reasonable surface area, whereas in the rutile form you have high crystallinity and small surface area. And the difference between rutile and anatase in their band gap, anatase has a band gap of 3.2 electron volts and rutile has a band gap of 3 electron volts. So, uh, if you decrease the surface area the number of active sites also decrease. So, what you want is a very 
a balance between crystallinity and surface area and that you achieve in the middle, because if you have very uh, amorphous type of TiO2, which you will get in the initial stages of the hydrate formation, then you will your active sites uh, will be uh, low, although you are having a high surface area because of poor crystallinity. So, it is good to work in this region, where you have the anatase form of TiO2. Now, uh, TiO2 is a very efficient photocatalyst, but you need ultraviolet radiation UV light. Normally, we would like to use visible light and uh, to use the solar spectrum, we would like to use the visible light uh, and the material should be active under visible light. Visible light is in the lower energy uh, region compared to UV light. So, visible light active photocatalyst is really needed for practical applications and will be economical if we have efficient uh, visible light catalyst. So, how do we modify the normal TiO2, which is a UV light photocatalyst to make it into a visible light photocatalyst. And that can be done by doping TiO2 with different materials like non-metals, transition metals or organic dyes. All of them can modify the uh, behavior of TiO2 with respect to the incoming radiation and all of them uh, you have to choose appropriately the type of non-metal or transition metal or organic dye to control the band gap of TiO2 or effectively generate electron and hole pairs by using visible light instead of ultraviolet light. You can also increase the activity of the catalyst by loading a metal oxide and we will see examples of these. The metal oxide uh, typically reduces the chance of recombination of the electrons and holes which are produced during the photocatalytic reactions. So, hence there are several ways by which people are trying to use uh, dopants to modify the band gap or to effectively create electrons and holes in the using visible light, because TiO2 is available in large amounts in the uh, earth and TiO2 is environmental friendly. So, it is a, a very challenging problem and important problem to convert TiO2 to a visible light photocatalyst instead of a UV photocatalyst. Now, uh, how do you make uh, titanium dioxide if you have to make it in the lab? Uh, you titanium dioxide is of course, available in nature also, uh, but you want to make titanium dioxide in the lab or in industry in bulk quantities. So, how do you make titanium dioxide which is active and hence you want to make anatase form of titanium dioxide. So, people have found several methods like the hydrolysis of chlorides or sulphates of titanium salts and they have used the sol gel method, uh, which is a very popular method and we have discussed in our earlier lectures or they have used the hydrothermal method, where you use a teflon or steel containers to create a pressure in either aqueous medium or using a solvent and uh, some pressure is created and reaction occurs under pressure at temperatures around 100 to 200. 250 degrees centigrade or maybe sometimes uh, up to 300, 350 degree centigrade. And there is another method which is the microemulsion method, where you use titanium salts and appropriate surfactants to make microemulsions, where you can make nano reactors using these microemulsions, which are present in solution depending on the type of surfactant and solvent, you can control the size of the nano reactors and then you can do reactions using the titanium salts and hydrolyze them within the nano reactors to give you nanoparticles of TiO 2, which are of the anatase form after 
certain calcination step. So, people can have used all these methods to make titanium oxide nano powders in large amounts and in the anatase form. Now, uh, this is another technique by which TiO 2 can be synthesized. This is the metal organic chemical vapor deposition or MOCVD in general as it is told, where you have your material uh, which can be titanium isopropoxide as discussed earlier. So, it is an alkoxide of titanium and that passes through a heater uh, and there are several other heaters and temperature uh, sensors uh, in the furnace. So, there is a furnace through which this uh, titanium isopropoxide is passed in the presence of oxygen and argon and then th at this temperature which you can control the titanium isopropoxide uh, can be uh, calcined over a substrate and TiO 2 is generated on top of a substrate. And if you want some metals to be doped or metal oxides to be doped then you put this metal oxide or metal as a dopant here and the temperature should be sufficient to volatilize this dopant and then the dopant mixes with the incoming stream of the titanium isopropoxide and forms TiO 2 on this substrate along with the metal or metal oxide dopant. And uh, this kind of system can generate large amount of very high quality uh, films of TiO 2 on the surface of appropriately chosen substrates. Substrates can vary from silicon to glass to quartz and a variety of substrates you can choose depending on what is your application of this photocatalyst. Now, uh, so how do we modify TiO 2 because we just discussed that we want to modify TiO 2 which is a visible light uh, UV light catalyst uh, in general, but we want to use visible light. So, how do we modify this TiO 2 by doping metals metal oxides and what happens when you dope metal and metal oxides to the band gap or to the valence band levels or to the conduction band levels. So, this is a kind of a graphic to show you that when the photons fall on the uh, photocatalyst which has got some metal particles on top. So, it is a metal doped TiO 2. So, we have modified TiO 2 with a metal the metal particles are here and this is uh, the titanium dioxide particle and when light falls on this particle TiO 2 then electrons and holes are generated. Now, the electrons uh, if they can migrate to the surface and meets the metal the metal is an efficient conductor. So, this will take away this electron quickly and so the electron this electron which is produced here is separated from the hole and that is what is one of the important points how to separate electron and hole and because of this metal dopant the electron has this tendency to go to the metal and the metal it is a good conductor and then it removes the electron. So, the electron and hole are separated. So, both the properties generation of electron and hole pair and transport of electron and hole away from each other such that they do not recombine both then can be met which makes then this material this metal doped TiO 2 will be good for a photocatalysis. Now, you can also dope a semiconductor. So, cadmium sulphide is a semiconductor and this uh, is your original TiO 2 particle. So, assume that you have cadmium sulphide particle uh, doped, doped in TiO 2. Now, TiO 2 has a band gap of 3.2 electron volts and this is the valence band and this is the conduction band level of TiO 2 whereas, cadmium sulphide has a smaller band gap of 2.5 electron volt. So, uh, in it can take lower energy and create electron hole pair. So, cadmium sulphide uh, can be triggered to generate electrons and holes with lower energy of 2.5 electron volt whereas, TiO 2 will require 3.2 electron volt. 
So, lower energy if you give you can still generate electron and hole because of the presence of cadmium sulfide. Then this electron can migrate to the uh, conduction band of the T i O 2 and the uh, hole uh, this uh, hole is generated in the cadmium sulfide. So, when the light falls on cadmium sulfide the electron is goes to the conduction band and the con electron is transferred to the T i O 2 and so the electron and hole are separated now on two different particles. The hole is retained on the cadmium sulfide and the electron goes to the uh, T i O 2. Now, this is so this was a metal doped T i O 2 this was semiconductor doped T i O 2 and then you can have an organic dye doped T i O 2. So, if an organic dye is doped uh, in T i O 2 then what happens is this energy level of uh, the energy gap of the organic dye to create an electron when light falls is suppose it is in the visible then this electron goes to the excited state of the dye the dye is now in an excited state and then the electron from the conduction uh, levels or the higher um, uh, orbital is transferred to the conduction band of T i O 2. And then uh, you can have some acceptor molecules which will take over this electron. So, the from the conduction band of T i O 2 the electron can be accepted by say an acceptor and that acceptor will get reduced. So, A will get reduced to A minus because the electron will be transferred from the conduction band of T i O 2 to the acceptor. So, uh, three particular cases we looked at modification of T i O 2, metal doped modification of T i O 2, semiconductor doped modification of T i O 2 and then organic dye uh, doped T i O 2 which we call dye sensitized solar cells is a very important area in which you are using a dye to uh, start this mechanism of electron being generated and then electron hole uh, being uh, separated. So, if you look at the band diagrams uh, you can create uh, different types of levels. So, suppose this is the original uh, levels this is the conduction band of T i O 2 and this is the valence band of T i O 2 and when you are doping transition metals it is possible to have uh, choose a transition metal such that you you now have levels which are lower than the conduction band of T i O 2. So, the electron will be here because it is lower in energy than this and you can have a hole in the uh, lower energy level or you can have a non metal doping T i O 2 then you have a energy level which is higher than the valence band of T i O 2. So, this is the valence band of T i O 2 and so it is higher than the valence band of T i O 2 and the electron uh, this energy may be close to the conduction band of T i O 2. So, either you can lower the conduction band or you can increase the energy of the uh, valence band electron or hole valence band hole. So, the hole will be here and the electron is here. So, these, th these are two modifications to the uh, bare T i O 2 which is shown here. So, this is also possible and this is also possible. So, this kind of changes in the band diagram by doping is called generally band gap engineering and uh, you can also uh, sensitize or, the or increase the efficiency of titanium dioxide nanoparticles by using metal particles through their plasmon resonance. Now, we all know when you have metal nanoparticles the conduction electrons of the metal nanoparticles can have collective oscillations. Uh, now, these collective oscill oscillations of the conduction electrons uh, can sensitize the T i O 2 nanoparticles and this has been observed uh, for silver gold copper nanoparticles where they exhibit plasmon resonance in the visible range. So, 
you shine light in the visible and the conduction electrons of the metal nanoparticles like silver or gold uh, then uh, get excited and you have this collective oscillations. And then this excitation acts like an antenna, uh, the metal particle acts as an antenna, uh, because this collective oscillation is generated by trapping the visible light energy or the solar energy and then it can enhance the uh, catalysis of TiO2. Once the silver nanoparticle which is doped on top of TiO2 uh, acting as an antenna catches the visible light radiation and then it can uh, create electrons and holes in the TiO2 to which it is connected. So, this is uh, what is shown here. So, you have this metal particle and you have the uh, TiO2. So, this is the conduction band of TiO2, this is the valence band of TiO2. Now, what can happen is uh, if the if you use UV light, uh, then you can excite this. So, you can create electron here and hole here in the uh, TiO2 and when you create electrons here, then uh, another property of the metal is that it can quickly take away the electron and then it can reduce any species for example, oxide can oxygen gas can be reduced to uh, this kind of superoxide ion. Now, uh, this reduction is possible because the electron generated in the conduction band of titania or TiO2 is quickly transferred to the metal and the metal then uh, the electron in the conduction band of the metal can get uh, will oxy will reduce this uh, oxygen and the hole which is in the valence band can be used to oxidize some species. So, this is another uh, possibility where you are using UV light, but the metal is enhancing the uh, application of the electron and the hole that is the reducing and the oxidizing capabilities are enhanced uh, by the presence of the metal. In the previous case these uh, surface plasmons are basically acting as an antenna to trap energy in the visible spectral range and uh, then it helps in the uh, sensitization of the ti titania nanoparticles. In this case you are not using the visible light you are using UV light, but you are efficiently removing the electron and hole because of the conduction properties of the metal and the metal then can quickly reduce uh, some uh, molecule which may be uh, oxygen and give you this superoxide ion. Now, you can have uh, so here the metal act nanoparticles act as an electron sink as I mentioned earlier and it promotes interfacial charge transfer and basically it reduces the probability that the electron created in the conduction band of TiO2 will interact with the hole on TiO2, because the electron is being removed from there. So, the metal is acting as a electron sink. Now, you can also have more complex nanostructures, where you can have metal decorated on core shell nanoparticles. So, core shell nanoparticles we know that there is one particle. Uh, and it is covered by something else. So, the particle inside is the core and the material which is covered outside is the shell. So, here you can have metals like silver gold or alloys like silver gold or copper nickel or uh, and you can make a large number of alloys of various sizes say between 5 to 150 nanometers. Then you take this metal particle inside and on the outside this gray part you put your titanium oxide and there are methods by which you can make this shell out of pure titanium oxide. So, the smaller particles the better you will have higher catalytic property the efficiency will be high. So, if you have small particles of TiO2 and you make a shell around the uh, metal nanoparticles then you will get a structure of this. So, that will be core shell nanoparticle but in this case it is metal decorated core shell that means on top of the TiO2 you again have either some metal 
or metal oxide. So, either metal or metal oxide you can choose one of them and depending on that the you will have now plasmon enhanced separation of electron hole pair. So, this metal nanoparticle will be activated uh, by the light and you will have this plasmons sur surface plasmons because of the oscillations of the conduction electrons and that will couple to the TiO 2 and then you will get electron and holes and if you have a, a particle like a metal like platinum then the electron will quickly get separated onto the platinum and then the hole will reside in the core and the electron will move to the surface. So, you have effectively separated the hole and the electron. If you use an oxide like ruthenium oxide then it does not take up the electron like platinum does, but it will remove the hole. So, then the electron will remain in the uh, core and the hole will go to the surface. So, depending on whether you have put platinum or you have put ruthenium dioxide on the surface of the TiO 2, you can have the hole on the TiO 2 uh, sur, uh, on the RuO 2 surface. So, hole will be removed from the metal or if you put metal particles like uh, platinum on the surface of the TiO 2, then electrons can be removed more effectively and then the hole will remain inside the core of the core shell nanoparticles. So, this is a very efficient uh, and interesting design of uh, core shell metal oxide nanostructures, where you have uh, three uh, materials designed. You have an inner core which is made of a metal nanoparticle like silver, gold, platinum or something and then you have uh, a shell of titanium dioxide. And on top of that you have some decoration of small particles of either metal and metal or metal oxide and this particles on the surface which decorate the surface of TiO 2 act as a sink for either the electron or the hole. So, as we discussed if it is platinum particles on the surface it will act as a sink for electrons and then the hole are inside the core and the electron is on the surface. So, they are charge separated. So, the efficiency of the photocatalysis is enhanced. The opposite is the hole goes to the surface and the electron stays in the core and that is possible if you use ruthenium dioxide as particles decorating on the surface. Now, if you have uh, metal particles covered with TiO 2, uh, uh, covered with uh, SiO 2 or TiO 2, then the visible light is not active because TiO 2 will not uh, activate uh, the elect will not generate electron or holes because the band gap of TiO 2 is 3.2 electron volts and the visible light is insufficient in energy to create electrons and holes. So, this is not possible. However, if you shine UV light and you have uh, the metal and you have TiO 2, then you can have electrons and holes, but the metal core shortens the electron hole pairs. So, you they recombine and hence you do not get charge separation easily and so this is not going to be a very efficient photocatalyst. Although you will generate electron and hole but the lifetime of the electron and hole will be very small and they will quickly recombine. So, this is also not a good situation. Now, the third situation is that you have a metal particle inside, then you put, put a layer of something like silica this brown part and then on top of that you put titania and titania is an efficient UV photocatalyst and this titania. Uh, which creates the electron and holes the because of the silica coating the electron which goes towards the metal will not be uh, recombining with the hole. So, electron hole recombination will be prevented 
by the presence of an intermediate thin layer of silica. So, this is another design of core shell structures, where you have made titania to be active in the UV efficiently. Of course, still it is not active in the visible with this configuration, but it is active in the UV and the efficiency is high by putting a silica layer in between the metal core and the outside titania, which will actually create electron hole pair when UV light shines on it. So, these are three models, one model uh, not effective in visible light, second model not effective in uh, visible light and also not effective efficiently in UV light and this is a model which is not effective in visible light, but very good catalyst in UV light. Now, if what is the role of the metal oxide, you can dope metals we studied have different role and uh, we looked at several uh, cases of metal doping, how it can remove the electron if it is outside and what it does if it is in the core. Now, if look at metal oxide and choose a metal which can have variable oxidation states. Now, these can lot of tra all transition metal oxide show variable oxidation states. For example, iron shows oxidation states of 2 plus, 3 plus, sometime 4 plus and in extreme cases even 6 plus. So, you can have iron at with various oxidation states. Similarly, you can also have cobalt with 2 plus, 3 plus or vanadium 4 plus, 5 plus etcetera. So, if you choose a metal oxide which can show variable oxidation states uh, and dope it with a titania uh, TiO2, then it can be a very good photocatalyst in the visible ray. So, how does that happen? You have again the uh, large uh, sphere showing you TiO2 particle and the band gap of TiO2, this is the conduction band and valence band. And now, you have doped this titanium dioxide with metal oxide and the metal oxide that you have chosen is iron oxide. So, iron oxide will have possibilities of being in iron 2 plus, 3 plus, 3 plus, 4 plus and so if you have this kind of oxides on top of the surface. So, what can happen? So, if you have electron and hole generation uh, even with less energy you can create uh, these levels where electron in the conduction band can go to the iron uh, 3 plus and iron 3 plus will get converted to iron 2 plus. So, you start with uh, Fe 3 uh, situation. So, iron is 3 plus, but iron 3 plus when it gains an electron becomes iron 2 plus and if you have a electron which is coming, uh, you can do this reduction. Now, if you have iron 3 plus here, so if you have a hole, iron 3 plus will get converted to iron 4 plus. So, in the presence of electron iron 2 plus iron 3 plus will get converted to iron 2 plus in the presence of hole iron 3 plus will convert to iron 4 plus. So, both are possible because of the variable oxidation state of uh, iron and the dopant also creates addition level. So, these levels are created additional levels. So, although TiO2 has this band gap, but the actual band gap will be due to the smaller uh, the intermediate levels which are introduced by the metal oxide dopant. And then this gap is lower in energy than this gap and if this falls in the visible light region, then it will become a visible light photocatalyst. So, this kind of band gap engineering then creates the dopants create additional levels and lowers band gap from the ultraviolet to the visible region and hence this catalyst becomes active in the visible region. So, here 
the important thing is you have chosen a metal oxide with variable oxidation states. Now, the dopant also acts as electron hole trapping center, because here you can see this acts as an electron trap, because it is removing electrons from here. And this way you can if you can choose some other material it can act as a hole trap right. So, you can have dopants which not only lowers the band gap from U V to visible, but they are also acting as electron hole trapping center. Finally, they also can be used as carrier agents to facilitate migration of electrons and holes to the reaction sites. So, wherever reaction is occurring because of the presence of these metal oxides on the surface, they act as good carrier agents because they help in the migration of the photo generated electron and holes. So, so two things are important as usual charge transfer events how the electron and hole are created and then migration of these charges to the surface. Both these effects enhance the efficiency of the photocatalyst. Now, this is a case where uh, it is photosensitization using U visible light. So, how you are going to use visible light uh, using a dye which is acts as a photosensitizer. So, in the previous case you brought down the band gap by adding metal oxide as dopants and then visible light became useful to make it act as a photocatalyst. So, TiO 2 with the iron oxide dopant became a photocatalyst in the UV, but here you are not using a metal oxide you are using a dye which is an organic compound. So, you see this large molecule with the aromatic rings and some pendant uh, substituents you can see uh, that this dye which is sulfur rhodamine B uh, this particular dye can be used to sensitize TiO 2 because the energy levels of this sulfur rhodamine dye uh, is uh, in the region of the visible light. So, using the energy levels of the dye of the sulfur rhodamine B, you can excite the sulfur rhodamine B uh, using visible light such that the electron uh, goes to a ex excited state and this SRB excited is the excited molecule and then the electron in this state can be transferred to the conduction band of TiO 2. So, the visible light is uh, basically taken up by the dye the sulfur rhodamine B dye here and electron gets excited and in the excited state the sulfur rhodamine B then transfers an electron to the conduction band uh, with which it has an interface. So, the dye is doped onto the TiO 2. So, this electron is transferred to the conduction band and then that electron can be further used for reduction. So, it is then acting as a catalyst because it will do this reduction reaction and uh, if some molecule is there which can pick up an electron then that will get reduced. So, what happens to this molecule after it loses this electron the sulfur rhodamine B excited molecule after it loses an electron it becomes a radical cation. So, after removal of the electron with the electron goes to the titanium dioxide and uh, then the sulfur rhodamine B becomes a radical cation and then it reacts with oxygen further and then that uh, forms another radical cation and which finally, decomposes uh, to form a smaller molecule. So, this organic structure gets decomposed. So, that is also a, a, a catalytic reaction that means, you are trying to uh, remove an organic dye you are broken the organic dye by uh, exciting uh, the organic dye with visible light and this photo degradation of the organic dye through a uh, radical cation 
uh, in the presence of oxygen can be seen and the final degradation products of this chromophore, chromophore is something which can uh, give out light. So, because it it it, it fluoresces sulfur amine B is uh, has a property of fluorescing and so it is called a chromophore and is a, a organic compound. So, here we are more interested in seeing that how titania was photosensitized using visible light and the dye uh, breaks down uh, and gives rise to some products plus maybe some ions like sulphate ion ammonium ion and gases like carbon dioxide or water vapor. And this electron of ti titania is also used for reduction. So, this is a case of how organic dyes uh, having a particular uh, difference in the energy levels in the ground state and excited state can be used in conjunction with TiO2 to act as visible light photocatalyst. So, important thing very important thing is that this energy gap should be such that it can be this molecule can be excited with visible radiation and then only you can get this SRB star which means the excited sulfur rhodamine B this is the ground state of sulfur rhodamine B this is the excited state of sulfur rhodamine B and from the excited state electron transfer to conduction band of TiO 2 and then it becomes radical cation and further undergoes degradation in the presence of oxygen and this electron can be used for reduction of some other species. So, this was another case. So, we studied cases of metal dope titania, coarse shell titania uh, decorated with metals, then a coarse shell titania with an interfacial layer in between how it can become efficient UV photocatalyst. Then we added metal oxides where the metal has variable oxidation states and how that can enable titania to be a visible light photocatalyst. And then this was a dye sensitization. So, the dye an organic dye is used which has particular energy levels which can accept visible light and hence it is a visible light photocatalysis that can be observed using uh, the sulfurodamine B as an example. And the electrons in TiO 2 can further reduce other agents. Now, this another property the previous one we photosensitized using visible light. Now, look, let us look at another problem where we can do photocatalysis uh, using uh, UV light and with the dye, but this is another uh, mechanism. So, under UV light under UV light the energy will be absorbed now with TiO 2. In the presence of visible light TiO 2 cannot accept the radiation uh, because of the lower energy, but the sulfur rhodamine B accepts the radiation. In this case the UV region the high higher energy light is being uh, uh, accepted by the uh, TiO 2 nanoparticles because it matches the energy. So, 3.2 electron volts is in the ultraviolet and so you will have electron generated in the conduction band and holes in the valence band. And so, this electron can then reduce oxygen and this hole can then act on the dye. So, here we are looking at addition of a hole on the dye to create again a radical cation of sulfur rhodamine B. This again is simple from here what we studied in the previous slide that the radical cation then acts with oxygen uh, to give you another radical cation and that breaks down to give you small molecules like uh, diethylamine, NN diethyl acetamide etcetera and then in the presence of holes or uh, uh, hydroxyl radicals it gets converted to this simple molecules or ions. So, in the previous case the radical cation of sulfur rhodamine B 
uh, is formed by the removal of electrons from the excited state of sulfurodiamine B and you get the radical cation. The same radical cation in this case you obtain not by removal of electrons, but by addition of hole and so two different processes one acting in the presence of UV light and one acting in the presence of ultraviolet light in the presence of sulfurodamine as a dye or an organic reagent uh, how the same product of the dye occurs can be understood because in this although the mechanism is different in this case the sulfurodamine B uh, degrades through the addition of a hole and uh, in the previous case the sulfurodamine degrades by removal of electron and then goes oxidation and then degradation. So, two different things uh, using similar materials TiO2 and sulfurodamine B as the organic dye, but the different mechanism of the degradation of the dye is due to the different energy that you are supplying. In one case you are supplying a visible light, in the other case you are supplying ultraviolet light and hence the mechanism changes uh, and the degradation uh, happens due to uh, electron in one case that loss of electrons in one case, whereas in the other case it is uh, addition of holes, uh, but both cases lead to the radical cation of sulfurodamine B and then further reduction uh, uh, further uh, degradation in the presence of oxygen. Now, let us look at few other case studies, uh, where we will see what is the role of network of corner shared octahedral units of metal cations. So, we will see when you use metal oxides other than TiO2, these are not TiO2 or these are other oxides, why they are photocatalysts in certain cases, especially when you have corner shared octahedra, it shows high photocatalytic efficiency. Then what is the role of the dipole moment and distortion in symmetry? how it affects the photocatalytic properties. Then effect of the electronic band structure that is the overlap of the orbitals of the metal oxides. If there is good overlap the bands will become broad and things will be different and so effect of overlapping of orbitals leading to changes in the electronic band structure. Then what happens when you have a mixed configuration of metal oxides. So, we will look at some of the case uh, cases which have these different properties. So, in this particular case uh, this is uh, the basically you are looking at how the overlap of the metal particle um, uh, metal and the oxygen uh, their orbitals overlap and if it is good overlap or bad overlap what happens to the photocatalytic properties. So, these are not TiO2 now we are discussing other oxides say this is a tantalum based oxide and it can be having a third element also. So, there is some so rare earth tantalate or uh, barium dependent tantalum oxide etcetera. So, this is rare earth tantalate La TaO4 in which case you have an orbital of tantalum 5 d or band of tantalum 5 d all the orbitals of 5 d uh, overlap to form a band of tantalum 5 d which looks like this and this is the energy scale and this is an oxide. So, you will have oxygen levels and the oxygen levels are here much below the tantalum 5 d levels which means this band has been formed from the 5 d orbitals of tantalum and this band has been formed from the 2 p orbitals of oxygen. Now, when you have lanthanum also lanthanum appears to have very sharp band or narrow band this is called a narrow band because the width of the band is very broad here in tantalum where compared to that this is very narrow it is almost like a discrete energy orbital. Okay. But now, 
the energy of the lanthanum 4 f orbital which is a very narrow band is lying somewhere in between within the energy levels possible for tantalum 5 d band. When such a thing happens that the orbital energies are similar then there is good overlap of bands. So, there is excellent overlap of the lanthanum 4 f and tantalum 5 d bands and good overlap of these bands uh, increases the activity of the catalyst and that is overlap of uh, that is the case shown here where the highest activity is reported because it has excellent overlap of the lanthanum and tantalum orbitals and bands. Now, here you see that this narrow band has shifted down this is the case of cerium and so uh, it will have a moderate uh, efficiency whereas in this case where the presidomium uh, compound the narrow band of corresponding to the presidomium 4 f orbitals uh, is uh, much lower and has no overlap between the tantalum 5 d orbitals which are contained in this band with the presidomium 4 f orbitals. So, there is hardly any overlap and if it there is no overlap then this acts as an electron trap. So, once electron comes it stays here and so it can act as a electron trap especially in the 4 f uh, orbitals of presidomium since it is a narrow band the more wider the band there is more delocalization the more narrower the band then it is complete uh, localization and very little uh, uh, electronic movement. So, it acts like a electron trap. Uh, so, from the band structure these kind of diagrams are called band structure diagrams and give you a lot of idea about the possibility of the movement of electrons the conductivity of electrons uh, through electrons and the band gap and difference in uh, what is what will be the optical band gap uh, all this you can understand by looking at the detailed band structure for these oxides. So, one thing is clear that better the overlap of the orbitals higher is the activity and poorer is the overlap of or orbitals or bands then the activity will be very low and the electron will be trapped and the electron will be not be able to reduce anything because it is trapped there. Now, the also possible that uh, you can have a, a high activity without even a co catalyst a co catalyst sometimes is added which helps in reducing the band gap or helps in effective electron transfer or hole transfer. Now, zirconia has a band gap of 5 electron volts and it is a unique photocatalyst that shows a very high activity. And the reason of this is it has a high negative flat band potential. So, if your uh, flat band potential is very high then your uh, uh, it should be negative the high negative flat band potential will lead to very good photocatalysis. So, this is an example zirconia is an example of that. Another very important thing is corner sharing octahedral unit. So, may, many many structures are known where the metal oxygen bonds are within an octahedra and these octahedra are corner shared or edge shared or face shared. Now, the most important and a large number of compounds are known where there are corner shared octahedral units of the metal cation. So, if it is a tantalate you have T A O 6 octahedra, it is a niobate you have a niobium O 6 octahedra and these niobium O 6 octahedra or tantalum O 6 octahedra are corner shared. Okay. Now, if they are corner shared then it appears that the activity is very high because this corner shared octahedra uh, as shown here will help in uh, migration of electrons and holes and this will be 
this has been shown to be very good photo catalyst for a water splitting reaction. And the reason is the tantalum oxide is a highly connected corner shared octahedral units whereas, the rare earth the lanthanum also has an octahedra, but it is not connected to the tantalum octahedra. In such cases the photo catalysis is very high. There is another example where you have two types of octahedra tantalum oxide and another rare earth oxide, but when there are two types of octahedra and they get interconnected then the activity for the photo catalysis decreases. So, what it means is you need one this tantalum oxide or niobium oxide whichever is going to act as, as the main site for photo catalysis should have this corner connectivity of octahedra and it should not be interfered by some other octahedra say of a rare earth. So, if it is unhindered then the activity is very high if it is hindered by other octahedra then it becomes inactive. So, this is very important the role of corner shared octahedral units and the presence of uh, linear chains of these octahedra is very important. If you have distortion in octahedra and if you have dipole moment then uh, what is the effect on the water splitting or photo catalysis activity. Now, the activity for D 10 metal oxides is strongly dependent on the distortion on their structure and it, you can see that whenever you have a distortion uh, then you will have uh, local internal fields uh, which will contribute to electron hole separation on photo excitation. Now, if you have distorted gallium oxide like this which have a net dipole moment they were found to be photo catalytic activity. So, dipole moment uh, will be generated as a cause of distortion. So, whenever you have a distortion you have high dipole moment this is 0 dipole moment very low activity this is high dipole moment and this is high activity. So, distortion high dipole moment high and so it will lead to higher activity. So, there is another case how you can increase the activity by better overlap of metal oxygen orbitals and you can increase the bandwidth by having good hybridization or overlap of metal oxygen orbitals and that will also give you uh, increased mobility of the photo generated electrons in the conduction band and lead to high photo catalytic activity. So, these are some of the examples of oxide photo catalyst based on D 0 metal ions. So, you can see titanium anatase and very good photo catalyst you can see of lanthanum doped sodium tantalate where you have T A O 6 octahedra and these are linear and shows very high efficiency. So, with these examples I will come to the conclusion of this lecture today and then we will have our continuation of this lecture uh, in our next uh, class. Thank you very much.